howdy peeps and welcome or welcome back um, today again we're in the wilds of Norfolk in the village of Morley St Botolph at the church of St Botolph a very old name um, as I said wilds of Norfolk so rather than look at my ugly mug where's my finger there uh, let's get the camera turned around and show you where we are first on a lovely, slightly windswept but very nice day overall apart from the bit of wind that's just decided to get up and the entrance, the lich gate and now it's time to dig out the notes of which again there aren't many so this won't be too long a video So halfway between Attleborough and Wyndham, uh, both Morley Parish churches, of which this is the St. Botolph flavour. Um, and they are actually remote from the villages that they are the parish church of. Um, I know, oh, I say I know, I'm pretty sure in St. Peter's case, it was because the settlement relocated, likely due to something like relocation or Black Death Plague kind of thing. Um, which left, you now obviously, it's a lot easier to move a straw or a mud hut than, <laughs> or wooden hut than it is a stone church. So, churches stayed where they were. Uh, obviously, it's still in use, so we'll. We'll avoid the new section. We just wander through the old section. I'm trying not to wave the camera back and forward as I walk. And so where we are actually is on a ridge, which qualifies as high ground in Norfolk. And as such, maybe not so much this time of year, but certainly in the winter time, the church can be seen from miles around. We did have Obadiahs in the UK. Now, the chancel, this is where we are now, is a Victorian reconstruction. The tower and nave are originally 15th century. However, the church was gutted by fire in 1959. Um, the nave was completely destroyed, with the tower acting as a chimney. Um, and this was only 10 years after Rockland St. Peter's burnt down as well. And obviously, church funding was fairly tight. And um, yes, it took a while to get St. Botos restored, um, but it has been I mean, as much as can be. And it did lay derelict for a while, but because the graveyard is shared by several local villages and hamlets, um, it was inevitable it was going to be done because it still, need, still needed to be here. Uh, the rebuild was by James Fletcher Watson, who's also famed for Boardswell Church rebuild. And that is literally all the notes we have. So the rest is what I've found out while I've been here. Well, here we have the Flints William. And Robert. Um, and if you know your symbology, yes, we're back with Masons and Templars again. Oh, look, look, we've been having ritual sacrifices as well. So 
someone's been sacrificing pigeons around here. Even more proof just up here. That is the pigeon's breastbone. I joke, I digress, it was probably a cat or a fox. Um, yes, yeah, so it is a very pretty little. I say little, it's not tiny, but compared to some of the other churches around here, it is a small one. Got some very cute buttresses though. And we come around this side. For some reason, this side is curiously absent of graves. No real reason for it, as far as I can tell. And obviously all the original stained glass windows were destroyed during the fire so they replaced it with modern stressed effect glass which gives apparently an interesting light show inside unfortunately much like St Peter's this one is locked and we didn't get hold of the key holder and go through all that rigmarole so we're on the north side, north door has been flinted shut. Um, we come up to what to me is one of the more interesting aspects. And that is this little mound in the corner. With a beech tree growing right out of the middle of it. Now all the surrounding land is lower. Which says to me... But this little mound here, I mean, you can see the profile, and you can see through <laughs> through the hedge that the ground the other side is low. Um, which, although I'm no expert, there's no geological or geographical reason for this mound to be here. Especially not to have a very large and very old beech tree growing in them, right smack in the middle of the mound. Um, that tells me that what I'm walking on right now is actually an ancient burial mound. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert in these matters. I've, I've watched plenty of Time Team and stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> In fact, the only exp explanation I can come up with for it. Um, another interesting thing is just the erosion pattern on this stone. And you can see the wind, the rain, perhaps some frost have got to it. And it's made out of the same stone as... And that one's 1888, that was 1894. So, that one's been there a while. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, no real paranormally stuff to say about. Um, we, we have felt something while we're here. As I say, there's no stories or tales or anything that I could find anyway attached to the church or really even to either of the Morleys um, that said it's ye olde <laughs> ye olde Norfolk settlements that are thousands of years old and yeah we're not alone I mean if nothing else I know Shuck has been spotted in the area several times so he may be around but anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed another wander around a little church. Another one with no mention of Ennery. I'll finish off with a look up the tower at the clock. And the downspout current out the cherub's face, which is kind of cool. Let if I can aim on it. I think that's it. There we go. 
Yes, the joys of an actual camcorder. Really good zoom. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. All the good stuff. It really does help the channel and me. Yes, I'm that selfish. Uh, <laughs> I do this because I enjoy it, but the money is nice. Anyway, thank you very much. Have a good time. Enjoy your hobbies. Stay safe. Peace out. And bye-bye.